Hi, I am Eveline Molina Jacker, and I'm a family physician in Salem, Oregon. And menopause is one of those things that's always been really fascinating to me. Women's health, uh, the health of our reproductive system, is something that hasn't really been discussed. And a lot of us don't really know what goes on in our body and what's going to happen as we change and grow. So I decided that I'm going to do a little bit of education on this while I'm studying to take my certification for the um, North American Menopause Society. Now, most of this I already know, but you know what? It's always so much better to be able to learn it and teach it. And here I am. So it's not going to be fancy, but I'm going to try my best. So menopause happens in our age between like 40 and 58. And if you live long enough, when the average age for a woman at this point is in the United States is about 81 years old. So there's about 40% of our lives is going to be taking place in this post-menopause period. That's a lot of time. And we used to think like, oh, because we can't be having babies anymore and all our hormones drop, then our life is kind of, our life as a yummy, vibrant um, sexual being kind of comes to an end. And that's all a lie. <laughs> that's not true. And I'm here to kind of help you figure out how you can live like the most vibrant and best way as you go through this transition. 40% of our life in this in this phase is a lot. So the first thing I think that we should talk about or I should tell, talk about is kind of like, let's talk about the menstrual cycle, like the normal menstrual cycle and what happens. And then I could go into like how it changes. So I am going to share my screen. It is a lovely photo that I kind of just got off the web. It's made by Creative Med Doses and it kind of talks about what happens in our body as we do this change. And give me a second here. You know, we, it, we have this whole beautiful system that works between our ovaries and our brain and these glands in our brains. And the first one that I'd like to talk about is the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is located just in the back of your head, right above the brain stem. And this hypothalamus secretes a hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone. This hormone then goes from your hypothalamus into your pituitary gland. And it stimulates the release of yet another hormone called follicular stimulating hormone. And what does that do? Well, it stimulates your follicles that are in your ovaries to kind of mature, not to kind of, to mature. Then it also stimulates another one, luteinizing hormone, that helps then help the ovaries mature, which then stimulates estrogen and progesterone and helps the um the ovary release an egg and it either gets implanted or it goes away. Here's another graph that kind of says the same thing, but just in a more linear fashion. And I'm going to go through this because this graph is really important. And I, I love this because it could explain a lot. A lot of people come to me all the time saying, I want my hormones in balance. My hormones are out of balance. Well, as you look at this graph, there's no such thing really as hormone balance because throughout the cycle, our hormones go up and down. And which hormones are we talking about? Are we talking about our pituitary hormones? Are we talking about our ovarian hormones? Are we talking about our sex hormones, etc.? So I'm going to go through this again. Uh, starting in your hypothalamus, it stimulates your pituitary. So the first one that comes out is this FSH. And this FSH, follicular stimulating hormone, starts helping our follicles develop. And these are the follicles that are inside of our uh, ovary. And you can see like here, here's the lining of the uterus, the endometrium. And as the follicles mature, estrogen also comes into play. I kind of think of estrogen as the miracle grow. It kind of helps the endometrium grow. So estrogen grows uh, and it also helps the, the follicle mature. 
And then luteinizing hormone comes in this big one and does a big spike and is telling the, the corpus luteum to get ready to get out of the ovary and become mature. It gives a big spike. And at this point, progesterone comes into play and progesterone helps that corpus luteum develop. Estrogen is also there, but estrogen dips a little bit and then they both kind of go up. As they go up, the endometrium develops. The highest point, the time when, if we really want to um, test for estrogen and progesterone, the time that I like to test is between 19 and 21 days, kind of in this place. And I like to see that progesterone is a little higher than estrogen. And that is before you go through menopause. So then progesterone comes into play. And I think of progesterone sometimes being the, um, the thing that cuts the grass, you know? So it comes in, goes it it's peaks in and it kind of helps this endometrium if you don't have if you don't get pregnant it helps this endometrium slough off and that's when we have our menses interesting huh such a it, it's such a you know normal cycle that goes up and down and really helps our body kind of um understand something interesting too is that it's during this phase during this uh secretory, the luteal phase, where we actually get a lot of PMS symptoms. And when, one of the things that happens during menopause is that our follicular phase, this part here, gets shorter, but our luteal phase could get longer. And this is why sometimes women, you know, when you go through this, um, when you go through perimenopause or menopause, it's almost like, what is going on? Why am I feeling so much more anger or rage or or just crampiness, like all of the things. And that's because your luteal phase is longer. I also think that it's kind of our time to kind of things that aren't working in our body, like in a more metaphysical level. I think like the more things that don't work in our life, we start feeling them more and we start noticing like, oh, that is really irritating me. And where maybe in the past, it didn't wasn't such a big deal because you had a be a mom and or work or, you know, being whatever, all that good girl uh, talk that we have been brought up with. All of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm just not going to take it anymore. I also like to think of menopause as kind of like puberty in reverse because it takes so long to develop and now we're kind of moving backwards. So here is uh, the stages. These are the stages of our reproductive cycle and our reproductive age. We start with menarche, which is the first day of your period. It's when you're around 11 or 12 and it goes, you know, and we have this reproductive age in our early, when we first get our periods, you know, in our early teens, our menstrual cycle could be very variable and irregular. And then it becomes more regular, right? Um, and we might notice like right before we get in about your 40s, you might notice a little bit of changes. I might notice a little bit of variability. And here, this is when the FSH starts. That's a follicular stimulating hormone. That's the hormone that kind of gets the ovaries to, uh, to mature. Starts becoming a little variable. The menopause transition actually is, you know, I, I think of it as four different stages. And what does that mean? So this, the final menstrual period, this is one day. This is what menopause actually is. Menopause is the anniversary of having 12 months of no cycle. Most of us probably don't even know when that is because when when was the first day of your last cycle? But if you do remember, if you have it written down, then it might be the time to celebrate like, whoa, I hit menopause. Yay. That's not a bad thing. Okay. So perimenopause is the entire time from when you start, the the cycle starts changing up until that one year mark of the last day of your first menstrual cycle. Everything else is post-menopause. So there's peri, which is means around the menopause, and then there's after your menopause. And they all have different kind of stages and like, where am I? So most people kind of start this perimenopause in their 40s sometime. Um, and we have to remember that like, 
we we all age it happens and it's so determined a lot of this like what starts it going is so determined by our genetics our lifestyle our environment stress all of it affects how we how our hormones are actually secreted it's it's fascinating and Right now, we're only talking about the sex hormones, but all our lifestyle, our stress, our diet, um, our genetics, the ways that our family has gone, you know, their history can really determine a lot about the way that we're going to experience menopause. So how do you figure this out? If you don't have a normal cycle, like what if you've had a hysterectomy? How are you going to know where you're at if you're not bleeding? Or if you've always, or if you had an ablation, or if you have an I, uh, a progesterone IUD? The truth is, is that like, how do we know where we're at? So sometimes what the ways that I use it, I do use this one hormone, follicular stimulating hormone to help me determine like where a person can be in this cycle. Unfortunately, it could be really variable. So when you like one time, it could be really high and I'd be like, oh, you're in the men postmenopause range. And then a little bit later, it's low. It's like, what's going on? Well, Estrogen also helps determine that. Sometimes if estrogen is high, it could make your FSH low if your estrogen is low because they work in a um, in a loop. I'm going to go back to this here. So when your estrogen is high, it helps shut off this gonadotropic releasing hormone, which then causes the FSH uh, to go to go. Uh, low, it stops it. But when so that's when estrogen is high. But when estrogen is low, that stimulates the FSH to go high. It's a negative feedback loop. So when how do we know what perimenopause is? So there's an early and a late perimenopause. The early one is is when your hormones and your cycle start to becoming a little bit irregular, and it could be like you're so used to having like. 28 day cycles and all of a sudden you have a 21 day cycle and then you have a 28 day cycle or you have a 42 day cycle when that starts becoming variable that's how we know we're in early menopause we may not have any other symptoms then honestly i think that irritability and that pms thing starts back then sometimes then in later perimenopause when we're not having ovulation so what happens is the FSH may not may be stimulating the, the ovaries to produce these oocytes and, and create a follicle, but sometimes it doesn't, or sometimes it does, and then another and then the FSH is kind of um it goes high, but there may not be enough estrogen, and then it creates another cycle that's really close together, and that is called luteal out of phase. So this is when the luteal part is out of phase. And what can happen is that um, there's a normal dominant follicle and a normal ovulation, but then there's another, on top of it, enough, another follicle that gets, uh, that gets stimulated by FSH. And then you have another here, another like um, stimulate another jump in your hormones causing another additional ovary uh to to produce an egg and uh a corpus luteum so we could get it sorry not explaining that very clearly but when you, sometimes you can recruit a second follicle and this results in another rise in in estro estrogen and again a little bit more of those uh side effect or the symptoms of a lot of estrogen. Also, when you have these develop, it causes a stimulation of your progesterone. What I see sometimes mm -hmm. is that when you don't have a regular cycle and you're not producing these mature follicles and the core and the egg, you don't get as much progesterone. So your estrogen remains high. It can cause really heavy cycles because it lasts a little longer and you develop a little bit more endometrium. And then the progesterone comes in later and then you have a really heavy cycle. 
uh, that to me also signifies a that kind of irregularity that you're in perimenopause. Thank you for joining me on my first uh, little video on menopause. I hope that you were able to get something out of it. Uh, if not, you can watch it again. If you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me. Uh, I will have my website and ways to contact me and where to follow me.